I'm uh, Jeremy Borsos, and this is uh, an exhibition at Open Space Gallery in Victoria. An exhibition of my work called Bean Pole, which is actually um, a trope, uh, a way of describing an archive uh, that is having to do with reactions to the camera. Reactions like this camera to wave and to hide one's face and to make a face at the camera, to do basically different reactions that, came, that happened in and around uh, the introduction of the home movie camera between the mid-1930s and 1980 when VHS came in. So what happens is it's a cycle of about a minute. You end up watching for the reaction but in the time you're waiting for that reaction, you end up witnessing people's lives. And so it's a kind of a antithetical archive. It's, it's, a, it's a remedy to the archive. It's not really an archive at all. What you're doing is you're living real time other people's past lives and seeing that they do all the same things we do. And it's a sort of recognition of time as it passes. And so we have 27 channels, 27 small movies that cycle around in minute to minute and a half sections. So in a, in a matter of five minutes and 30 seconds, you have seen 162 small movies, all showing different parts of different people's lives, ending with they're realizing the camera is looking at them and they respond by waving or hiding their face or making a face at the camera in some way responding. But you've already witnessed their lives in that same time. So that's uh, more or less what one of two projects is. The second project is in the small room. We'll take a look at that now. So some of these, some of the people that are in these small movies that I've created that are kind of quasi-narratives are actually individuals that appeared in the first uh, project. Uh, and what that creates is a, a bit of a reflection on memory. You've only seen the people in the other project for a second or two. And as they appear in this small narrative, they're position has changed. Now actually they're looked at as performers or actors, which is entirely different than our observing them as individuals in normal lives. So what it does is it turns that idea of the archive again on its head and we're looking at people that we've just seen and have a very short abbreviated memory of. This work here is just endings of films. The very tail end.
So hi, uh, my name is Dylan McHugh and I'm part of Drill. We're an artist collective and there's four of us. This is Rachel White, Ian Prentice, and Leisha Donahue. Uh, we came into fruition in 2009 and we've been working collaboratively ever since. Um, predominantly in Vancouver, we do large scale installation. We collaborate on every stage of everything. Um, and. Uh, that's that's a little background, um, and then we were invited here by Helen to uh, bring Move It On Over, which essentially is a video installation that focuses on the tumbleweed as a subject. And what we're interested in, in this case, was. Uh, dealing with the constructs and iconography of the tumbleweed symbolism and um, just playing with that and bringing it to light and how this was kind of mediated through western genre of, of film in the 20th century cinema. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where we were coming from with this. And so we, we thought, we ended up uh, constructing this this room, this sort of after domestic setting. Very staged. It's very staged. Uh, these are false walls. Um, and we, uh, we wanted to bring the tumbleweed out of the, out of the you know, background, the traditional context of uh, the film into the, into the limelight, to sort of the, the focus of this uh, exhibition. And we put it in this domestic space. Um, the domestic space is a place where um, that personal occurs, I suppose. Yeah, the, the personal relationship uh, to the tumbleweed as it is constructed through the media. Um, it is also uh, a place where this tumbleweed is... Uh, looking back on its uh, slurry days in the film as sort of this self-reflexive sort of... Uh, Object this plant and, and as a as a symbol. Yeah, and I guess it's kind of interesting for this in this uh, situation. We we really wanted to heighten the theatricality and kind of give you like when you're coming into the room, you kind of feel like you're getting a behind the scenes look of like the tumbleweed's life, and and then you're seeing like this relationship in the domestic and this personified tumbleweed to the relationship that it has in film and then your relationship to all of this um, and then that's where the viewer gets to play around and wonder well you know what does what does this really mean to me and and just kind of infer their own meanings and impressions um, yeah so we're very interested in kind of opening and deconstructing these these stere are not stereotypes, but I guess like just kind of narrow tropes, and yeah, going from there, allowing new things to arise and possibilities to occur. Where in a world where you know you could have like a ceiling of tumbleweeds, a cloud floating over top. Yeah. I guess it's also um, acknowledging what we already know about the tumbleweed inherently, or how we've, um, I guess through film, we've absorbed what the tumbleweed has, as an icon, icon has meant in film. So while we're playing around with it, still uh, acknowledging what people, yeah, vicariously have already taken in and have, uh, I guess, sentiments towards the, t the tumbleweed and nostalgia. and nostalgia around the tumbleweed so I think that brings up the project brings up a lot of what you already know whether you're aware of it or not yeah. so that's um, yeah. also as just a, a plant it's really interesting it's an undesirable it's a weed it's an invasive and we really like that kind of background to it, especially initially when we started working with the tumbleweed, of like, you know, this kind of uh, second or third class kind of plant, you know, it's 
been like segregated for certain reasons as being like the bad plant. And then in film, it's being like associated with like, you know, moments of like, you know, solitude and like, you know, conflict and hardship. So I guess that symbolism is really interesting to play with and to bring into like certain spaces. Like open space, it is way more open, but uh, a previous installment of this, the location really informed how like the weed and like what that signified. So yeah, we're, we're definitely interested in that as well.